We can't be complacent. The fate of Ukraine hangs in the balance. But let's be clear, if Putin succeeds, there will be untold further misery across Europe and terrible consequences across the globe. We would never feel safe again. So we must be prepared for the long haul. We've got to double down on our support for Ukraine. And we must follow through on the unity that we've shown in the crisis. Heavy weapons, tanks, aeroplanes, digging deep in our inventories, ramping up production. We need to do all of this. Our sanctions have already seen Russia facing its first external debt default for a century. And we need to go further. There must be nowhere for Putin to fund this appalling war. And that means cutting off oil and gas imports once and for all. Ukraine deserves nothing less than a landmark international effort to rebuild their towns and cities, regenerate their industries, and secure their freedom for the long term. We're doubling down. We will keep going further and faster to push Russia out of the whole of Ukraine. Ahead of the NATO summit in Madrid, we need to lift our sights. We have long argued that NATO needs to be flexible, agile, and integrated. The eastern flank must be strengthened and we must support crucial states like Poland. That's why we're increasing our troop presence and we're deepening our defence cooperation. Some argue that we shouldn't provide heavy weapons for fear of provoking something worse. But my view is that inaction would be the greatest provocation. This is a time for courage, not for caution. And we must ensure that alongside Ukraine, the Western Balkans and countries like Moldova and Georgia have the resilience and the capabilities to maintain their sovereignty and freedom.